Hey, check out this sweet graphic I'm carving up with my new carving knife. I actually made a whole set of these carving knives, and I'm going to take you through that process right now on Hack and Build. Let's get started. I started by drawing up the knives in Inkscape, the same process I used for my saw blade machete. I find that Inkscape is an excellent tool for getting the sizes and proportions right. From here I cut up all the pieces, use some spray adhesive to glue them onto the saw blade, and then I used an angle grinder to cut out all the individual pieces. The work is held down using the fixturing clamps that I described how to make in a previous video. These clamps really come in handy for projects like this, and you'll see me using them throughout the course of this project. Once the knife blanks were cut out, I roughed out the shape and then cleaned them up with a grinding wheel and some files. I also used a Dremel to add a sharpening trial. Prior to making these knives, I wasn't sure what the purpose of that little groove towards the back of the knife was. It's really only a guide to help you sharpen the knife. It tells you where to stop, and it also allows you to sight down the blade and better see the bevel. With the blanks cut out and shaped to size, I could focus my attention on the handles. I used another log from my dwindling hoard of walnut. Yep, I'm still burning them and have just about all the prepared stock I care to store, so why let them rot and go to waste? I used my trusty hatchet and splitting wedge to get the log into manageable chunks. The hatchet I'm using is a Fiskars X7. It may look like a toy, but it's actually a high quality Scandinavian tool and is a great value at only $25. It's sharp off the rack and as soon as I got mine home I was able to put it to work making that mallet I've been using. Next I put the log chunks in my vise and quickly trued up each edge with a hand plane. From here the face can be smoothed out further, or it can be shimmed just as long as it doesn't wobble on the table saw. Now to just cut it into a few strips. I cut the handle stock to the desired length and began planning out how to mill the slot for the blade. I'm not sure how blades like this are normally assembled, but my approach was to mount the blade flush with the top of the handle and then use some pins to hold it in place. The steel I'm using is a little thinner than the 8th inch kerf of my woodcutting blades. I didn't bother measuring, but the 16th inch chipper blade from my dado set was about the right thickness. From here I set up my table saw and milled the slots. To get rid of the radius left by the saw blade, I sharpened up one of the blanks like a chisel and removed the radius. If I were to use this method again, I'd probably make the blanks a little bit longer in the back and then just try to match the radius of the saw blade. Now to mark and drill the holes. I fitted the blade into place and secured it with some masking tape. I marked off where I wanted the holes to go, then punched them with an optical punch. Time to drill the holes. All right, let's finish shaping the handles. I started by roughing out the general shapes of the handsaw. I followed that up with a chisel. Then I gave him a few passes on the belt sander. From here I was ready to grind the bevels on the blades. I decided on a 20 degree bevel. I created a guide on my table saw using a scrap piece of wood. I then taped the knives to the block using masking tape and ground both sides. I thought this worked alright, but next time I'd probably add an extension table to the sander so I'd have a larger area to rest the guide on. Since the small blades had taken quite a bit of heat during the initial cutting process, I planned on heat treating them in case they'd lost hardness. Later on I realized this might have been unnecessary, but I'll still show you the process I used. I created a makeshift forge out of some regular old bricks, a piece of steel, and a map gas torch. I proceeded to heat up the blades to a bright red, and then briefly air cooled them down to a cherry red before quenching in some vegetable oil. 
Once I'd heat treated all the blades, I then tempered them in a toaster oven at 400 degrees for four hours. Now here's why I think my foray into heat treating may have been a waste of time. I checked the hardness of the heat treated blades and I was getting around HRC 55. And that's the same as the untreated steel. So what do you think? Was my heat treating effort a waste of time? Let me know in the comments. I decided to use 12 gauge copper wire for the pins. I gave the pins a little taper on the belt grinder to make them easier to insert. To secure the blade, I used a basic all-purpose epoxy. I mixed up a small batch and performed the final assembly. Once the epoxy had a bit of time to cure, I used the old woodworker's trick of sawdust and wood glue to hide some of the blemishes. Next I snipped the wires and did a final course of sanding. For the finish, I just applied some Danish oil with a paper towel. And here's the finished set of carving knives. When I originally put these together, I kind of envisioned using them primarily for chip carving. So when I created these, I did the two uh, stabbing knives and then the uh, variety of cutting knives here. But this one knife here is pretty good for whittling and I actually posted a video last week of me making a little flower with this knife. And yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with these knives. I, I love the walnut with the copper wire and they're really comfortable to hold. It just has a really nice feel in your hand. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I do have some saw blade stock left over. So if you have any ideas for what I should make next, leave me a comment. And as always, subscribe for more hacks and builds and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.